right, finishing up nine three. Nine three. Yeah, nine three. We're looking at if we have an absolute value on both sides of the equation. So this isn't too crazy, too different from what we did with just a single absolute value. So what we want to do is take our absolute value, our pair of absolute values, and we split it to the inside of one equals the inside of the other, or the inside of one equals the negative of the other. So those are our two versions. So like here, I would say negative three, or three minus two x equals three x minus one, or three minus two x equals negative three x minus one. So a couple of things here, really the two mistakes that I see on this are folks not getting this negative distributed or trying to make both the left and the right negative, trying to say x equals y or negative x equals negative y. We only put the negative on one of them. That's because if I put it on both, it means the same as this. If I put it on both, I'm really taking this and multiplying both sides by negative 1. I'm not getting that extra information here. I put it only on one of them because if the inside of this one equals the inside of that one, their absolute values will also be equal. If the inside of this one and the inside of that one equal, or if one of them equals the negative of the other, the absolute values are still equal. Having a negative on both of them is already covered right here. So we need to just throw it on one of them. And the other bit is forgetting to get this negative distributed. It's the entire inside of this that gets this negative. It's not just going to get thrown on the 3x and called good. So. We can go ahead and solve these out like we would any other problem. So if I add my 2x over, we have 5x minus 1, and 1, 4 equals 5x. Divide my 5 over, x is 4 fifths, or if I Add my 3x over. 3 minus x is 1. Subtract the 3. Negative x is negative 2. Or x is 2. So notice again, like before, that I throw the negative on back here. I don't throw it on the end and say, oh, it's 4 fifths or it's negative 4 fifths. I don't do that. What I need to do is set the insides equal and say it's that, or one inside is equal to the negative of the other. And it doesn't matter which one you throw the negative on, as long as you throw it on one of them. All right, our last bit is to check these values. I need to make sure that these do truly work. These do actually give us solutions. Three minus two times 4 over 5 is the absolute value of that equal to the absolute value of 3 times 4 over 5 minus 1. Well, no need to fuss over this when we have calculators to give us a hand. It's the absolute value of 7 over 5. And this is also the absolute value of 7 over 5. So we know 4 fifths is good to go.
We'll check two. So if I plug two on in there, it looks like I'm going to end up with absolute value of negative one and the absolute value of five for that one. So it actually turns out that two doesn't work. So this can't happen. We can't end up with no good solutions. So four fifths is actually my only solution here. All right, let's take a look at this last one. So same process. I set the insides equal to each other. And I set one of them equal to the negative of the other. Again, it doesn't matter which one I put the negative on, as long as I just put it on one and I get that negative distributed. Now I'm good to go to solve. We're going to end up with 8x plus 3 is 5, subtract 3. 8x equals 2, divide by the 8 and simplify, x is 1 over 4. Oops, there we go. If I solve this one out, I end up in a problematic spot. That goes to 0, so I end up with 3 equals negative 5. Well, that's not true, so I'm not going to get an answer out of this one. I'm just going to get this answer out of it. But I still need to check this one out, just like I had to check up here. So I'm going to say 4 times 1 over 4 plus 3 equals absolute value of 4 times 1 over 4 minus 5. So you have 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Oops. But the absolute value of negative 4 and 4 are the same thing. So this is a perfectly valid solution. So kind of an interesting thing that you might see in this is that without the absolute values, so if I just had this, these two are never going to be equal, those insides. Because if you think about it, I don't know exactly what 4x is. But I do know that there's not a number in the world that if I add 3 to it and subtract 5 from it, I'm going to somehow end up in the same place. But with the absolute value and the potential of this negative, I can end up with a solution. All right, that is it for 9.3.